TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are live right now. But by the time you see this, we won't be live, man. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, and let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, I don't know if you might be seeing this on Facebook, you might be seeing this on Rumble, you might be seeing this. I don't know. Wherever you at, subscribe. This is gang member George, aka Lil Jungle. This is I think this is soft white underbelly, right? Okay, I just let's get into this. This is gonna be good. All right, your name is George. Little Jungle Boy from Blackstone. From That's where? a blood like, George. Little Jungle Boy from Blackstone. That's a so gang member George, aka Little Jungle Boy, South Central. Oh, you really in there? Blood gang. That's my hood name. Yeah. Blood gang out of L.A. You feel me? Are you in Iraq? What was this? June Ju Garza. I know you. What part of Chicago you from? Oh man, I forgot. I'm recording. Where I grew up at. I'm just curious. My dad here, OG from there. You feel me? So originally, uh, with everything gang banging, I grew up where like the shit originated from. Up in Louisiana for a little bit, and then we moved out there where you know by White Castle, where the Vice Lords Disciples at in Chicago, out there in New Orleans. Oh, he, oh you. You've been in this. You've been in the field. Hold on. Before we even get any further, I already know what's going on. I already know what's going on. Wait, 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 wait. Viewer discretion is advised. I do not glorify, sensationalize, or condone any of the acts or stories told. I am here simply to educate myself and others on the history or the current state of issues around the world. This is intended for mature audience and it contains graphic descriptions and crime scenes, adult dialogue, and strong language. This one I made. This one I found. I got somebody who gave who made me some notes. I'm gonna put them on here though. Oh, okay. They got the gangster disciples and shit. So you moved from New Orleans, New Orleans to... to Chicago for a little bit. And that's when I was all out here, when I was born out here. But I was You're raised closer. in New Orleans, Chicago. And then you came back to LA? Yeah, I came out here when I was about, I want to say. So you was destined for this eight, time. Eight. <clears throat> and uh, that's when my um, adopted slash foster mom moved, moved us out here to Cali. Where, where was your mom? My mom, she was, uh, she'll tell you the truth, I don't know. I always thought my foster mother was my mama until uh, my big sister came looking for me. So besides that, I ain't know. But shit, we- what was, your, what was your childhood like? How would you describe it? My childhood, shit, uh, oh shit, mom, she was, uh, she was an addict and shit, you feel me? I didn't really know, I just know mm -hmm. I had to have heart surgery when I was a baby because I had a hole in my heart and blew my shit out. So that's why they took me from her and then... So you was you was born with a hole in your heart because of her addiction, okay. Other than that, I grew up in the jungles. I know you hear it called the A's and J's. So I was back and forth from the jungles to the Anthus parks, you feel me? You joined the gang at what age? I joined the gang when I was 10. Mm -hmm. Oh my, I joined the gang when I was 10. Uh, took my five man, got That's in. Cali, okay. Um, I got with four of them, the fifth one, I ain't gonna lie, I got knocked out by the G homie, <laughs> you feel me? But it's all fun though, cause you know, after that you smoke your blood, drink, do what you do, so it's Gucci, you feel me? But after 10, oh my, just went from hustling, doing what it do, something happened. See, most people don't know about like the jungles back in the days. You probably hear about it where when people tried to come on a block, especially my block, the G Walk Pond, where you, police wouldn't even come down there. You couldn't even come through the block. Like, AKA, you should call that Kill Century. Like, it's kind of like a pretty green. Wherever you go, if you know your way around the jungles, Bring you'll get trapped. It's like a big ass maze. You ever been there? It's right up in the hills. Yeah. So we got alleyways, cuts. Oh, mama started out as a runner boy for the G homie. Doing what it do, carrying my year still, you know, doing what it do with the dope. As I got older, you feel me? I got, I want to say what, 
because I went with sis at nine, and then I want to say around like 12, she said I was too wild, so I had went back in the system, and then I had went to um, juvenile hall, got into a juvenile hall, I got booted out because of my medical. And uh, so when I got booted out, I went home, never went back to juvenile hall, but on uh, mama's, I went to her. We are three minutes and 22 seconds in, and this is the this he this is a wild story already. This is whole from birth to 12 years old. Is a this is a this is a that's a from birth from okay from nine to 12 is a lifetime in itself. He's lived that's crazy. Hustling, I know you can see my arms and shit. so it's on my arms, my chest from hustling. She gang banging, you feel me? Shit, I got wicked. I got kidnapped. Niggas like tortured, threw in the trunk. I woke up, I was in the trunk, bleeding out and shit. My big sister Tay, oh, mama. You, you, got, you got a lot of cuts. Is that is that what all the cuts are from? Yeah. On, on your my, on your torso. Yeah, my arms. It's on my arms, my stomach. But shit, after that, did oh mama. So I woke up in the trunk. When I woke up in the trunk, I wasn't even knowing. You feel me? Like, you look the shit up on the internet and shit. That's what this shit from right here. You got shot in the head. It's one of the things. Bro, done been kidnapped, tortured, shot in the head? That's, I'm, boy, this man done lived 12 lifestyles. 12. If you look at it, I can show you. It went through the back right here. That's where they shot me. You got shot in the forehead. No, I got shot in the back of the head. You got back shot in the, the back. Head, and it came out. That's why I got a plate in the front. Went through your brain? In the back. Yeah. You know the... What the... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> it hit the back and came through it? This is so. This is the type of stuff, man. When you survive life, a life like this, God got a bigger calling for you. This, this is like God got something for you. You supposed to be here to tell your story to prevent others or, or something. He got a higher calling for this dude. That's crazy. But in the, the the centerpiece, that little split shit, where your brain is it parts or whatever. The different hemispheres. The dude, yeah, that shit. Oh, when the okay. dude fired a bullet, it split. So basically, the shit being old, it saved my life. It's not, I wouldn't, oh. wouldn't really call it a misfire, but you know, you think about guns and ammunition, like every once in a round, like with a 223 or 227, the bullet is split when you flip, like piece of it come off. So shit, that motherfucker split and went through, boom, boom. Oh, mama, I ain't even gonna lie, I thought the bitch misfire. I didn't even know I was hit. And my girl, she didn't even know. Once I pulled up, we asked my sister when I pulled up, Oh, mama, that called my chick. She came and got me, but she just came and got the car. She didn't even know I was in the trunk. You feel me? So my mama's get to sis house. She popped the trunk, boom, I'm out, yada, yada. I just tell her like they was torturing a nigga. You see my hands, they broke my fingers and shit. Oh, mama's cut out my tendons. So shit, oh, mama, I deal with that. What, what did you do to them? And then I want to say, I want to say like, what? Around that time, I was like 18. So from there, but was there any damage, any brain damage from that? I had TBI. I was uh, partially paralyzed from the waist down. I had a uh, catheter. They wanted to give me a uh, shit bag, but I they couldn't because uh, I guess when the dude hit me down here, one of the blades, the shit, it tore my. Uh, is it the lower intestines or the big intestines that you shit with? So it had nicked that. So they were saying that if they didn't do the surgery, like like the feces would be leaking, and leaking into my stomach. But what they did was they went in there, sold it, and like still to this day, like I want to say for like the, I want to say for like the first year, I couldn't eat like no hard foods. Oh, oh, I thought that was an earbuds. I couldn't eat no hard foods. So like for the first year, I was eating oatmeal. I couldn't eat no peanut butter. And I could barely eat oatmeal, but like anything that'd get me constipated or make me push, I couldn't eat because that shit'd tear my insides up. So like to this day, I got a big ass like 
you know, like the sterile sponges and the packing, like all around my intestines. They got it locked in and sewed up in there. So like, it won't move or bust cause it's just still fucked to this day. So. You done prison time? Yeah, I did uh 14. That's an obvious question. Years in the pen. I had got into a, uh, I was about to get to it. So a couple months, I wanna say a couple months later, uh, I was taking care of some shit, uh, making a deal. And the police came, they pulled up in the hood on the block. And um, I got into a shootout with him. Um, that was the second time I got shot in the head. I got hit in the side right here. Yeah, that's Man got shot in the head twice? On two different occasions and live? Telling y'all, bro. Yeah. The odds of that is oh, ridiculous. Mama. You shot in the, in the head twice. Yeah, I was shot in the head twice. One by the enemigos and one by the police. And when I was shot in the head the second time, my mama, because they said they did it because when they came up, I was belligerent. They said I was intoxicated and uh, I was armed and dangerous. So I'm like, if I'm armed and dangerous, y'all should have came to the house with the SWAT. They didn't cut to the house with SWAT or none. And like I was saying over there in the jungles, everybody over there knew my pops. You feel me? Because he was like the nigga that like made sure the block was good. He did what he do. You feel me? All the youngest looked up to him. He was like one of them cool ass OGs, big mud bone. Your dad was in the gang as well? Yeah, my dad, he was from Twins. My mama. Well, my dad, my original dad, my biological dad, I don't know that bitch ass nigga. From what well, me, I got a, me and my older sister, we got the same dad. But like, it's gonna get into a whole cold twist. It's gonna get into a whole cold twist, whole cold twist. So me and my sister, <coughs> the one I'm talking about that got the same dad, around when all this shit happened, when I got locked up, shot in the head, and they raided the house and everything on the block, saying that um, I was in a, involved in a police officer shooting and a couple of sheriffs was killed and the detectives and yada yada. They didn't have no proof, no nothing. All they said they had was a phone call and my case would have got dismissed because at the time I had dreads and they said that the dude that did it didn't have dreads, the nigga had braids, but it wasn't enough evidence. So I went, I fought my case for two years and then I ended up getting 14 with 85. But within the two years process, while I'm in the pen, I don't know if my big sister told you, but my sister that me, me and her got the same dad, one of his sons is a sheriff. So while I'm in jail, in the county jail, if you ask anybody about the county jail, the only way you could get in your cell is if the police could, uh, if the police unlock your shit from the tower. So while I'm in there, when I first go in, they tell me they are gonna K-12 me. K-12 is like, uh, it's not a PC, but it's uh, it's basically protective custody because I had a police officer in my family. So they was like, until that get cleared, and I'm like, I ain't got no police in my family. What the fuck you talking about? Wrong one. They was like, you got a brother named Marvin Pollard, your dad's George Pollard. I'm like, what the fuck, hell? I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I ain't never met that nigga or this nigga. Like, it was real shit, I'm like, what the fuck? And they was like, nah, bro, you got this dude. So mamas, while I'm in here, I wanna say, once I get out of K-12, I'm in the game module probably like two months. It's about like two in the morning, my cell get cracked. And when my cell get cracked, I'm asleep, but the door- How your cell get cracked? You don't only, the, the police can only crack the cell. That's what you said. It's cacao. It could make that loud ass pop noise. So I kind of woke up, but I didn't. Yeah, and when I didn't do what I was in. supposed to do, Oh, mama's had a dude hand around my neck. I got sliced from here all the way around. Before they could get to right here, oh, mama's hopped up, did my shit, walked out the room, my shit was leaking. They said it looked like a slaughterhouse in my room, blood was everywhere and shit. And um, they tried to give me an ad charge because the nigga that sliced me up, I killed him. But at the same time, the district That's self-defense though. No matter where you at, in prison or not, that's self-defense. Attorney told me that it was self-defense. Yeah, I killed yeah, that's self-defense. But 
at the same time, the district attorney told me that it was your defense. I was single cell because of the uh, 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 my standards of my case and shit. And then so they wanted me, I had to be in the gang module, but they wanted me to where I moved around and everything, you feel me? And I could, um, like how you say, basically run my program, get my phone calls, canteen. But the shit was weird, like the way everything was going. So when that shit happened and I came out the cell, the police came up on me, I'm tripping on them because ain't no way in hell somebody could just pop my door. Like that's a still door. Like if you want to get out that bitch from the inside, like if you big enough and you with the function, you can kick that bitch off the hinges. But other than that, like that shit ain't opening. So they were saying like it was a computer malfunction, this and that, yada, yada, whatever the fuck. Did you sue them? So I want to say three weeks after that, I go to court. The judge asked me um, what was the situation about the uh, murder in my cell. I don't like, you like, you ain't got no celly. What was going on? Was you high? I'm like, man, my door was popped while I was asleep. Somebody tried to kill me. I'm like, that came from a share. You feel me? The judge was like, nah, nah, you paranoid. We'll do a whoop. Miss me with that shit. No, so for real. when no I, way. uh. This is no way, bro. The door malfunctions. And somebody was out there. Somebody else was out there cell at the exact time when, when all the doors was locked. That don't make sense. When I get back, because we was going to um, CCB right down here downtown. So when we get back to the county jail on Mama's, that night after I said that, um, I'm in a cell on Mama's. I'm sitting in my cell and I'm posting, I'm making my spread, I eat and shit. And while I'm in there on Mama's, my cell get popped. They tell me to step outside. I step outside the door, boom, they tell me to come to the corridor. I come to the corridor. Cause in the corridor they got like A, B, and C wing. So when I come out there, big ass black dude come get me, cuff me up. Like what the fuck I'm going? I'm like man, it's like two, three in the morning. What the fuck going on? They take me in the rec room. They handcuff me to the thing. Oh mama's the big black dude. Never seen a nigga in my life start welling up. Boom boom, nigga broke my jaw. Boom boom, I had two broken ribs. The nigga dislocated my shoulder. And came to find out that uh, the nigga was my brother. It was my dad's, yeah, all bullshit to the side. It was my dad's oldest son. The nigga fucked me up, came in there, said I was, um, I put a rat, be, um, rat, a bad name on our family's last name, and yada, yada. And I'm like, nigga, I don't even know you. I don't even know none of your family. You feel me? Like, what the fuck is you on? And they was like, well, whoop de whoop whoop and this and that. So, on um, mama's, I ended up, I woke up in the hospital, face swollen, yada, yada. So, I wanna say, um, it's 2008. Y'all looked that shit up on the internet. 2008 on Mama's. So what? Who really put the bad name on the family? This dude not even connected to y'all. He don't know y'all. He don't know y'all from left. Y'all know him, but he don't know y'all. And look and and look look at the, the what he's become because he had no parental guidance, no mother, no father, no nothing. I go to court, I wanna say, I wanna say it was the fourth or fifth time. You look it up on the internet, 2008, that shit's still on there. I'm the nigga that was shot for the third time. Not in the head no more, but that's when I was hit in the face on mama's. Not in the head, but in the cranium bone still. Three times, that's- Inside the courtroom. You've had a lot of people try to kill you. Inside the courtroom you were shot? Uh, You've had a lot of people try to kill you. Nah, that's because they try, well, that, yeah, it's, I want to say it's the way shit. I ain't gonna say it was the way I was raised, cause my mama, including your own family, huh? Including your own family. Yeah, oh mama, but that's just on my dad's side. Like on my mom's side, ain't nobody like on my mom's side. It's all love, but my dad, like the motherfuckers, is like them weird. Like my auntie and them, they've been trying to talk to me since he passed away. You feel me and link up with me and everything. But it's just like. Everybody see everything good, and they don't see that one side to the shit I went through on the inside, you feel me? And like my sister and them, they tell me all the time, like stay away from me, yada yada, cause they fake, whoop de whoop. But it's just principles like, oh mama, so when I was in court, them fools shot me cause they said I tried to escape. And like, how you gonna escape? They said cause I punched the glass window. Oh mama's the judge, when, he started, when she started talking about my time, 
I ain't expected to say that much time that soon. So when I went there, they was talking about giving me 365 years. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? I'm like, y'all tripping. I'm like, what the fuck am I facing again? Uh, they were like, um, double homicide, uh, uh, police officer. They were like, uh, it was double homicide and police officer. And they gave me like 11 tempted murders. So I was like, y'all, y'all out y'all rabbit ass mind. Y'all got me fucked up. Like, that's out. And uh, my cock back pushed the window and the officer, like he came inside the tank. And I don't know if you can see, you see like two little black spots on my side. Yeah, yeah. The nigga, he came, I was so hyped up. He came, held the taser to me for like five minutes. I didn't go down. I kept punching the window, broke it out. And on every day when I tried to climb out the window where the, um, you know how it blocks the uh, court, the, the take from the judge. When I tried to climb out that bitch, her mama is the deputy, he done my shit. But that shit went through, and all the things I could, I should knock out my wisdom tooth and shit. So shit, that shit was. This man is the main character in GTA. He's the main character in GTA. This is unbelievable. Are y'all hearing what I'm hearing? First of all, in that courtroom when he was doing all that, I, 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 now I don't want to put myself in the officer's shoes, but like they, they scared at this point. They, you put a lot of fear in them boys. I wouldn't know a lie. They, they, it sounded like they had the right to do that at that moment. Cause that's crazy. No offense. If I'm offending somebody, hey, it is what it is. But from what I hear, this dude was a wild boy, a little jungle boy, indeed. And I was in there, that's the crazy part. They thought I was high on drugs in there, but I wasn't, I was just mad. I've, never seen, I've never seen anybody with as many wound, uh, scars as you. Uh, yeah, that's what a lot of people be sure. I don't know if you can see it here, but there's a there's hundred knife wounds on your torso. Yeah, they, everybody be telling me I look like, uh, and they like, I'm a real African black panther. You know, the evil. That, yeah, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. He looked like, um, what's his name? The, 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 the Michael B. Jordan's character in the Black Panther. <laughs> Oh, mamas. But, like, that shit, yeah, this shit, man, a lot of people don't know, man. All this shit, though, all this shit right here, right here, this shit came from the kidnapping. Like, shit like this right here, these deep ones right here, this one, that's a gunshot wound. This one is from getting stabbed up in the pen. How far did you go to school? Me? Yeah. Oh, I graduated. I went to 12th grade. You did? Yeah, I graduated school. Do you, do you regret joining a gang? Huh? Do you regret joining a gang? Do I regret going in, joining a gang? At the end of the day, nah, because it taught me, like, I ain't going to say, like, it taught me who I am, but it taught me more about being a man and, you know what I'm saying, walking the streets. Like, I tell these young cats, this gangbanging shit, it's not a joke, it's not play, this shit a lifestyle. No matter where you go, niggas, if niggas know you, they know you. So, you feel me? It was just, what, Halloween. On oh, Mama's Halloween, me, my daughter, and um, my um, god nieces, we driving, boom, boom. On oh, Mama's, niggas seen me, they knew me, knew the car, they lit that bitch up. On Halloween this year, shot my car up, boom, I got out, went to do, and that's when I got hit in the nuts. You did? <laughs> yeah, I got shot in the nuts on Halloween. You win. He got that. Do you remember that Drake song that just came out? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, Stand alive. That one with that sample. Wanted me to die. Wanted me to cry. That's this man. This man is impenetrable. This is crazy. My sister Tay was laughing at me because when they came, my shit was cocked up like this. <laughs> oh, and everything. But she was tripping about that shit. She was like, nigga, how's you still up walking? Nigga, you even shot in the head, the face. Now, nigga, you shot in the nuts. So all together, what? I say gunshot wounds. If you want me to go through gunshot story, I want to say all together with the three facial, it'll be, what, 28? 28 times I was shot. So, like, it was, man, like. I'm just thinking 13. Bro said 28. Ain't nobody got nothing on, bro. When it come to that, 50 cent, little T, nobody. Niggas don't understand that And there's about 100, 100 or more stab wounds on you. 
Oh, the stab wounds, I want to say that's about like, I want to say like 175. Yeah. Oh, mama. And then I got them on my back too, where like niggas. You think it's like, karma? Karma from doing what I was doing when I was younger? Yeah. Uh, how, how many people do you think you've killed? Yeah, you want me to speak on that on camera? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Allegedly. Look at who is this guy interviewing? Damn. <laughs> yeah. no, we're not naming names. Oh, okay. We're just uh, rough, rough, rough number. Rough number. Uh, I don't say before I went to jail. Rough number. Between 10 and 15. Hey. Including the guy. What is happening? <laughs> prison too, right? And then, they, and then there's a guy in prison. Yeah, the dude, before I went to jail, about 10, 15, then uh, in jail in the county, only one in the county because the nigga he tried to slice my shit. Yeah. And then in the pen, I had a broken cat neck because we got into a melee. And uh, the nigga, Oh, mama's shit was wicked. The nigga, I don't know if you see this right here, but you can see it? Yeah. Yeah, so while we squabbing on mama's, we squabbing, a dude run up, I dunked low and I came, bam, slap his ass. But when I came up on mama's, we had got into a riot with the woods. So when I came up on mama's, the nigga had like a little four little, but I don't wanna say like that big, a little pocket banger. And he stuck me in my shit all the way in. I ain't even know the nigga had that shit that much shit on mama. Boom, bam, getting with it, boom, bam. With the shit hanging in my shit and all that, getting with it, boom, bam. Pick the nigga up, slam him on his neck. On oh, mama, so I turn around, get with it some more. And uh, the homies, they looking at me all funny and shit. I'm like, fuck y'all staring at nigga like these niggas running up. We doing our shit, boom, boom. Next thing I know, the homie like, bro, you got a knife sticking out your head. I'm like, blood, stop playing. I turn around and get off, boom, bam. And when I turn around and get off, the homie, he scream, and it's a real ass nigga. Like, this the Damu on me from Lane. He pass out. I thought, fuck. Homie's like, bro, you got a knife. So when I reach to pull the shit out, oh, mama, that's when they shot me with the Mini 14 in my leg. You know what the Mini 14 is? It's like the, okay, it's the, okay, you ever hear, you ever hear people say, we don't get no warning, they don't get no warning shots? So it's a mini 14, it's the big ass, it's the rifle that shoot the 223 rounds. Okay. So I got hit in the leg with the 223, the mini 14. So from here to here, it's all is still raw. So like my bone was reconfigured and everything. They hit you with a 223 round in jail? You said in prison, they hit you with a 223 round. What jail is this? <laughs> A 223? That had to break that bone. He said they reconfigured it, but it broke it in half at least. But the whole time I'm standing up, we squabbling, yada, yada, and I wouldn't go down. So the lieutenant, the lieutenant Nolan, he came out, and uh, the homies, they surrounded me because I wouldn't get down. I was like out of it. I ain't going to say I was zombied out, but when I get mad, I just nut up. Like, you was like, on oh, time. Man, it's, it's done for. So. While we was um, doing that, the Lieutenant Loney, he came up on the yard. They was like, Pollard, man, I need you to get down. I'm like, man, y'all niggas shot me something. You feel me? I'm like, I got this shit in my head. I need to take it out. I'm like, I can't feel my face. They like, what the fuck? I'm like, yeah, I was going to take it out. Next thing I know, I get hit. Like, this is bullshit, bro. Y'all trying to kill me in here, too. I'm like, I just left the county. Now y'all niggas trying to take me on the pen. Like, what the fuck going on? So. Oh, mama, no lean. He do the shit A1. He take off. Like, they got it to where they could hog tie you with the strap on their ankle. So he take that off and he put the little, whatever they want to call it, tourniquet on my leg to stop the bleeding because the shit hit the artery and all that. They lay me down, hella back me. I come back, go to the hole, yada, yada. I get out, but I kind of skip some shit. One thing that I didn't leave out, like, it's a big. I I swear to God, this dude need to link up with 50 Cent and get a TV show going on about his life. This is the why, like, they can have a 12-series TV show on bro life, and I'd watch it. 
I'm, I'm telling you, I watch every episode. <laughs> this is. I don't know if you know about the shit that's going on with Sheriff Baca. You know Sheriff Baca, right? Yeah. How he got fired and nigga jail time and all that. No. So I'm under one of those cases where the nigga, uh, they investigating him under me for one of the shits when I was in the county jail. So apparently after all that shit, I want to say about the third time, I had my cell got popped on mama's. Uh, they moved me to, uh, third time. not PC, but they moved me into the medical floor because I kept having seizures. I guess whatever the motherfucker had did. <laughs> yeah, all the all the bullets through your brain and nice. Uh, yeah, you're gonna kept, have seizures at some point. Yeah, so I kept having seizures and shit. So they moved me to the medical floor. So when I'm in the medical floor, I'm thinking everything gonna be gravy. Right, because I heard in a lot of documentaries I watched the medical floor, no matter where you at, it's like a little vacation. You ain't gotta worry about stuff there. They let you call home, yada yada. So while I'm up there, and they start doing weird shit like the sheriffs. All of them was cool except for this one Mexican. So I want to say like, I want to say for like the first five months, I swear to you not, probably like once a week I was getting down with the sheriffs. Boom, boom, get them. Brrr. Oh, mama's getting tased. It'll be one taser, two tasers, swipe the white. You feel me? So it got to the point to where, and I ain't gonna lie, I learned my lesson too after that. Cause uh, they ended up getting the biggest spending dude off my uh, floor. But I got with him, boom, boom. And then this one, one chef named Marietta, he came up while I was taking off on his partner. They was tasing me and I wasn't going down. So that nigga, he actually put me to sleep. <laughs> like, I'm like, I ain't never been put to sleep before. You, like, you, Do you believe in karma? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, put to sleep within, when you doing, when you, when you trying to take off on somebody, it's different. <laughs> <laughs> Do I think that was karma? No, do you believe in karma? Yeah, I believe in karma to the fullest on mama. I believe in karma. Karma's a bitch. Like to the- He need a YouTube channel. He need a YouTube channel. It's, it's gonna be tough. Like as long as he just tells stories, he need a YouTube channel. He overnight success on YouTube easily. <laughs> Full but you're still, you're still standing. Huh? You're still standing though. Yeah, and that's the thing. Everybody tell me like, oh, mama, they say your book is written before your ass come out your mama coochie. So you feel me? Before you come on, your story, everything from the beginning to the end is already ready. You got nine lives. So, huh? You got nine lives. Yeah, I said that. My nieces call me Wolverine oh, and man. shit. So yeah, Wolverine I, said, man, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say like technically nine, nine lives because she, like just, just on the streets, I didn't die a couple times. And in the pen, I'm talking about shit, it's to the point where they got a federal investigation, not just on the shit that happened in the county jail, but in the pen from them not giving me my medical medication. I just, man, all type of shit. The niggas trying to kill me in the pen. My cell getting popped in the pen. I'm waking up after they get down with niggas in the pen, getting stabbed, all type of shit. Do you have any, do you have any regrets in your life? Any regrets? Uh, I say the only regret I say that I have like all oh, bush to the side, the only regret that I have is basically going to the pen because I wasn't out there for my nephews and shit. You feel me? So, do you have, do you have kids? Me, yeah, I got a daughter. Yeah. Oh, mama, I got a daughter, and I didn't even know about her until what I want to say, like. My 10th year in. Yeah, well, you, you spent half your life in prison. Yeah, um, my uncle, I went in when I was, um, what, 18? 18, yeah. I went in the county jail, 18. And from 18, I didn't get out until, uh, this is 2022, 20, I didn't get out until 2021. So. You just got out. You still on your, you still under 30? Right? No, his 10th year in, he was 18. He was 28. He could be in his 30s, early 30s. Yeah, that's what. That was like, what, 2007, eight? Oh, my bad, sorry. Nah, he old. 2007, so 2007 to 2021. George, what would you say is the most important lesson oh, you've learned okay. in your life? The most important no, yeah, lesson, like, oh, mamas never take family for granted, you feel me? And one thing I don't ever do, 
I see all this shit down here, everything. I ain't never doing no drugs. I didn't show this shit. I just seen the gang wars over it, the the blood over it, everything. Like this shit, this shit vicious. I didn't cook this shit, rocked it, everything. You feel me? But I can't fuck with it like these niggas fuck with. They want to smoke it, and nah, that's out. You never played around with drugs? I smoke weed. That's it. Like everything goes, I can't do it. Like I know me, like like I know me, like I like pussy. I like weed. I like eating food. So at the end of the day, I know me. I got like how you say like the addictive uh, personality. Like, yeah, you feel me? So I feel that if I start something and I like it too much, it ain't gonna be no stopping, no rehab. So before I do that, like I'm gonna distance myself from it. Like old mama, that's why I won't sell nothing that I use. If I, I smoke weed, so I won't sell weed. If I'm gonna sell something, it's gonna be Chris, Cabby, some shit like that. You feel me? Cause I know I ain't gonna touch that shit. Man, sell your stories on YouTube. This is crazy. So there was one time I went to a G homie and asked him for a cigarette. The nigga gave me a cigarette. Man, that shit was laced with shine. I must have ran from Crenshaw. What was that? Crenshaw Stalker to Crenshaw King to King and Buckingham to the block asshole naked. Cause of the water. Like they said, I took off down the street while I'm running. I'm coming out my clothes. And Man, PCP will mess you up. Huh? The PCP will mess you up. Yeah, man, oh, mama, I was like, what the fuck? And then my dad, I ain't know what the fuck it was. My dad, when I came out, he seen my eyes. And I'm like, man, what the fuck? I'm going up on him. They like, what the fuck? Who you smoke shine with? I'm like, I ain't smoke no shine. All I did was get a cigarette from the big homie. He was like, who the fuck? I told him. He was like, man, that shit. Big homie and Pops, they got out and they took their homie fade, boom, bam. Pops knocked him out. And uh, my mama, she got out there, though. This my mama, as you probably heard from my sister, my mama crazy. My mama got out there like, y'all hoes foul, we'll do a whoop, drug my baby, we'll do a whoop. And my dad like, he ain't, they didn't do shit, it was a nigga, you feel me? That's why I got out with him. But the homegirls, cause I ran on the block, they was like cuffing my ass and trying to grab my shit and shit. Well, I was fucked up and they was recording this shit. So and everything. Silver lining, <laughs> you got some, you got some meek owl out of it, didn't you? And Pops took me in the house, gave me some milk, put me in the shower. That shit came down after that, I said never again. Like I get homies all the time. Like if I'm out there selling crystal or some shit, they be like, bro, you, you not even close, bro. I sell that shit. Get the money, boom, bam. Yada, yada. Anything else? Yada, yada. Niggas ask me that shit all the time. And on mama, I was just disciplined like that. Cause I started selling dope when I was young, before I even came out here. You feel me? So You started I selling dope at, at 10 years old? Yeah, I was selling dope at young age. On mama's rocking back. And that's why I said I started off as an errand boy. You feel me? I just, you know, Cook the shit, cut it up. And I'm not surprised. Go drop it off. Oh, mama, my G homie, he give me my little thing for the week. You feel me? I go get my dollars plus my money from cooking and cutting it up and running. Man, hey, listen, man. Stay in y'all kids' life. Stay drug free. Stay away from gangs, man. Simple. <laughs> Find another route. There's always two routes in your mind. Go the other way. And around. So, shit. When I was doing that at 10, I had my little moolah. My mama tell you, it didn't matter, you feel me? She'll go up in the refrigerator. My little sister, she done found the shit plenty of times. She'll go in there, big ass bag of hot Cheetos. You think it's hot Cheetos? On mama's, it's a bundle of ones, fives, tens, all up in the bag. Mama going in the freezer. She see the ice cream boxes full of stacks of money and shit. And that's when my pops, he not my biological father, but he was my dad, like the nigga. Like he raised me, put me on, you feel me, put me out there. So he had me on everything. He sat me down, talked to me like, what the fuck is all this? I'm like, ah, man, like, nigga, I'm getting it. Like, I'm tired. Like, for real, for real. I don't want to wear feelers and all this other shit no more. And shit like that. He was like, man, I right, just be safe with you, whoop. He was like, let a nigga know what's going on in my household, though. I'm like, for sure, say less. What do you see for your future? Huh? What do you, you just got out of prison a few years ago? Oh, me? Yeah, I got out of prison in 2021. 2021. Oh, okay. Oh, the timing of this, that was months ago. <laughs> Just last year? Uh, last year, um, I went to in March. What do, you, what do you see for your future? What do you want to do? What do I see for my future? He got out when my daughter was born. Um, Any chance you can be back in prison again? Hell no. Nah, I ain't gonna lie. 
I done told my family, I ain't going back to jail. They gonna have to kill me. I swear to God, I am not going back to jail. They gonna have to really pop me, cause that's out. I, I swear to you not, my family didn't think I was gonna make it out. When I say the police was trying to kill me, bro, like, them niggas was trying to kill me, like, that shit's like sad, like, it's it's to the point where the homies is coming up to me, like, nigga, you know the police, they got a, um, they call that shit like a jug. They put a jug out on, like niggas out here that call it green light, but they would sound like I was a little jug, you feel me? Like, oh mamas, if it was an issue, they'll send the MA towards my way because it was already facts out that for one, they had me labeled as a cop killer. For two, they had me labeled that I had the green light on me for my brother. So it was already a goal to take me out for the police. So that shit was just fun and game. And in the pen, I don't know if you heard about the shit, for like the gang members and shit. You ever heard of Greenwall? The police, they got their little gang in there. So mama's in there. Police, you say one thing stupid. That's only at uh, Salinas Valley. But uh, mama's, when I was at Salinas Valley, that's where I got into the ride at. And after I got shot, I was in the hole. I was in the little um, infirmary shit. Then I went to the hole. He was nowhere was safe for him. You know how some, some people go to prison just for, you know, I'm safe in here, I, I got three meals, I got a bed, not him. He was the biggest op in prison and on the streets. That's crazy. While I'm in there, oh, mama, I say some, I didn't even say it was some weird shit, it was some smart mouth shit, but the sheriff, he asked me, was I hungry? I said, what the fuck it look like? Hell yeah, I'm hungry. I'm like, cantina for another week. I'm like, hell yeah, I'm hungry, and it's the end of the month. <laughs> like, I want my breakfast tray. They was like, yo bitch ass ain't got a woo woo woo. And I'm like, yo bitch ass can just give me the tray, nigga, and shut it up, it's too early. They like, oh, I got you, Paula. He like, nigga, you wanna get out? I'm like, nigga, give me my tray, nigga. When I'm done eating, we can get out, it's whatever, nigga, I'm hungry. I'm just thinking I'm talking shit, he talking shit, cause they say that shit all the time. So after they come pick up the trays, I'm sitting there doing my morning workout. Man, this nigga come tap my door, like Paula, uh, the sergeant wanna see. I'm like, what? He like, the sergeant wanna see. I'm like, what? Yeah, I guess you want me to pull you out. Nigga pulled me out instead of walking to the office right across. This nigga take me in the back towards the worst name. Like, what the fuck? And the nigga that I talk shit to, he's like, you still want to get out? I'm like, what the fuck? I look around like, nigga, this is a joke. Y'all about to give me an ad charge, what the fuck? He's like, nah, nigga, we gonna get out. Nigga took off his, uh, his little vest shit, his utility thing, his belt shit. He got out there, I don't know if that nigga thought he was gonna whoop my ass or what. Got on a bing, bam, dropped this bitch ass. Homeboy rest me, the rest of the um, little CO, boom, bam. Fuck they ass up. But on mamas, I wanna say, after like the fourth person, I turned around and all I heard was ding. That nigga hit me with that billy club. <laughs> I said with lights out. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know if you can see at the top right here, the little shit, where it split my shit. <laughs> Another scar. Yeah, oh mom, that's why that shit split my shit. I feel that, I still feel that shit to the day on everything, cause it got like keloid, keloid skin on it and everything. Like that shit was fucked up. Like oh mamas, I woke up in my room, but I ain't do no snitching. I ain't snitching on police or nothing, oh mama. When um, they came and found me, before the fool left, it was like, man, you did that shit like a G, bro. You ain't scream, cough, no uh, wooty woo. I'm like, nah, I did it like a G, but y'all niggas some bitches, bro. You knocked me out with a baton, my nigga, you's a bitch. It was like, all right, nigga, when you wanna get out, I'm like, nah, I ain't getting down again, nigga, cause you ain't gonna hit me with no baton again, <laughs> nigga. Like, you got the game fucked up, bro. Hold on, is there a part due to this? This is some of the greatest storytelling I've ever heard to, to get your story out there so others won't have to go through the same thing. YouTube, TLLE would like comments. But the homies is telling. Turn on your posts, man, I'm gone.